if a nuclear bomb exploded in space, how far would the shockwave go? The beginning of the 1960s was a period of high tension during the Cold War between the Soviet Union and the United States. On August 30th, 1961, Nikita Khrushchev announced the termination of a three-year moratorium on nuclear tests. Already on September 1st, the Soviet tests resumed, making the beginning of a series that included the explosion of the Tsar Bomba, the most powerful thermonuclear weapon in the history of mankind. In response, the U.S. President John F. Kennedy authorized Operation Dominic. It was the largest nuclear weapons test program ever undertaken by the United States. Operation Fishbowl was part of the Dominic program and was a series of high-altitude nuclear tests. And in turn, the Starfish Prime project was a part of the Operation Fishbowl. Starfish Prime is one of five nuclear tests conducted by the United States in space and the largest one among all conducted in outer space. It's noteworthy that the event was preceded by a failed start. On June 20th, 1962, the launch vehicle, a minute after the start of the flight, at an altitude of about 10 kilometers, began to fall apart. The landfill security officer ordered the destruction of that rocket. On July 9th, 1962, the Thor rocket carried a thermonuclear warhead was launched from Johnston Atoll, located in the Pacific Ocean, about 1,500 miles southwest of Hawaii. After almost 14 minutes, an explosion occurred at an altitude of 400 kilometers above a point 31 kilometers from the atoll. The capacity was about 1.45 megatons of TNT. For comparison, this was around 40 times less powerful than the Tsar Bomba. And the starfish explosion caused a large electromagnetic pulse, much larger than expected. Because of this, many devices went off scale, which made it difficult to obtain accurate data. In addition, civilian infrastructure suffered as a result. In Hawaii, 1,500 kilometers from the project of the explosion point, hundreds of street lamps were knocked out, many active alarms went off, and telephone services failed. After the detonation of the bomb, bright auroras were observed in the, conjunct in the con conjugated region at the equator in the affected area. As well as on the opposite side of the planet, the lights were truly huge. They could be seen in a radius of thousands of kilometers. The electrons generated by the explosion are very light and quickly move away from the place of detonation. In motion, the electrons are exposed to a magnetic field so they flowed along the lines of the Earth's magnetic field and dumped into the upper atmosphere. At an addition altitude of about 50 to, 11, uh, to 100 kilometers, they were already stopped by Earth particles. Atoms and molecules absorbed the energy of electrons, thus creating an artificial glow. Other high-energy electrons created radiation belts around the Earth. The military became very worried when as a result of a meeting with the belts, three satellites failed. In the following months, artificial radiation belts led to the failure of at least six more satellites. It's likely that in addition to effects such as a powerful electromagnetic pulse, a very bright aurora and dangerous radiation belt should be a shock wave. A shock wave created by a nuclear explosion is generated by the rapid heating of the air, water, or rocks near the bomb. During detonation, occurring gamma and x-rays come into contact with the surrounding matter, and during interactions, part of the energy is transformed to matter, heating it up. Heated matter expands, generating a shock wave. That is, radiation from a bomb detonated in an almost perfect cosmic vacuum must go a long way before being absorbed by, bat by matter, and as a result, the shock wave in space is so small that it can go unnoticed. And this is on Hows and Whys by Vicky Verma. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.